Hey guys, JD here with the Kawasaki Ultra 310 Jet Ski. What I'm about to show you here will apply to any Kawasaki Ultra or STX Jet Ski. And this is adding a sacrificial anode to the jet pump. So the Kawasaki jet pumps are, in my opinion, the most well-made pumps in the industry. I've done videos on this before, and this is evident just from looking at the pump. These are all made in Japan, extremely high quality castings and very high quality components. Just looking at the pump itself, you can see these are so substantial. They almost look like the Berkeley pumps you'd see on a full-size jet boat. Really a, a heavy duty pump. So Kawasaki jet skis do not come with any type of sacrificial anode on the pump. The pumps are aluminum with a stainless steel wearing that is built into the liner of the pump. The wearings are not replaceable. So I noticed on my old pump after about 150 hours, the, the liner started to swell. This is something that happens with saltwater use, even with flushing and washing. And you can see that there's not a lot of corrosion on my pump or the components. There's a little bit because my skis already, you know, two years old with, with over 200 hours. So what I've purchased here is this small, sacrificial anode all right so if you look at your jet pump you'll see that each of these bolts really doesn't have a lot of clearance around them except for this one right here in the bottom left corner so this anode is going to have to go right there on the bottom left of the pump i'm trying to get a focus on it for you there you go so it's going to go right here the bottom left corner of the pump this is a 25 millimeter anode and I drilled the hole out to 3 8 so that it accommodates the factory bolt. Now you will need a slightly longer bolt than the factory bolts and that's to accommodate the extra spacing of this anode. You can see I've roughened it up. You wanna make sure there's no grease between the, the pump and the anode. It needs to have a nice, um, good contact with the aluminum body of the pump. So. We're gonna put that through the bolt just like this. So this longer bolt here is about 45 millimeter. It can be as long as two inches. It just comes out the back. It's not gonna press against anything. So you can get a 1.75 inch or a two inch bolt like this. And it should, there's, there's nothing, again, there's nothing on the back. So a two inch bolt would be safe. You'll just have threads exposed at the back. All right, so you can see my new anode there. I'm gonna tighten that up. And there you go, you can see it, it sticks out just a bit from the side of the pump. My nice new sacrificial anode. So if you ride in salt water, this might be something you wanna try. All right guys, so there is my new sacrificial zinc anode installed. Um, this is a Sea-Doo part number. Check the description, I'm gonna give you the part number for this. You will have to drill out the center of the anode so that it will accommodate the Kawasaki bolt. And then you're gonna use a slightly longer bolt to accommodate the extra thickness of that anode. So yes, it's true. I hate to admit it, but now I do have the Sea-Doo part number on my ski. So my sea, my, uh, my jet ski does have just a small drop of Sea-Doo blood uh, in its veins uh, because of that anode. I did buy a couple different ones from West Marine. And the Sea-Doo one was actually the, the best size uh, to fit right there. You can see it's got a little more room. So if you found a different um, around 25 millimeter or so round one at your local Marine store, you can drill out the center so that it can be accommodated. Um, I just, I chose to go with that Sea-Doo part number that I am gonna show you again in the description because it's easy to source um, and it's, it'll be easy to, to change it out. Um, it's about $20. So why does the sea dew come with an anode and the Kawasaki's don't? Well, that's largely due to galvanic corrosion that's generated as the result of the closed loop cooling system on the sea dews the Yamahas and the Kawasaki's. Um, as far as I know, the Yamahas do not have an anode on the pump. I feel that adding that sacrificial anode to the pump will protect my pump from swelling and, uh, and will prevent um, excessive corrosion from forming on the housing itself. Remember that with any anode, you want it to be contacting the metal surface directly, no grease or insulator between that anode and the surface. And then um, basically I'll keep checking that anode and when it starts to wear, that'll, uh, that'll be my, my indication that it's time to be replaced. So again, in this case, just to take a step back, I removed my 
step and I remove my reverse bucket. On a 2022 plus Ultra 310, you will have to put the ski into maintenance mode to extend the reverse bucket actuator in order to remove this quick connect coupler. I have videos on how to do that. If you have a pre-2022 uh, Ultra 160, Ultra 310, or STX, current model STXs as well, you can just remove this manually without having to do any type of maintenance mode and you can add that sacrificial anode to your jet pump that's going to be used in salt water. Well, I hope this was helpful and uh, I, I can't report the results back yet, but I do hope that by adding that anode, it will protect my jet pump components from saltwater corrosion. Thanks for watching only on JD's Waterworld. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing for more exclusive jet ski content only on JD's Waterworld.